What's going on, Badger fans? It is not a fun reaction show, but we are always here. Sometimes a little late, but we are always here. Win or loss, Badgers uh, lost a, a frustrating game to Iowa, man. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh. Dude. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Doc, I-, I need to talk about it. My head is going to explode. What the heck just happened? It's the therapy session on Locked On Badgers. All right, so uh, myself, Rajiv, we're here. I-, I apologize for being late. I know I got a couple text messages. I purposely kind of kept the phone to the side. I went to the UConn-Marquette game today, so up in Hartford at the Excel Center. Uh you got to see a good basketball team play. How about that? I did. One of the things I told Rajiv is like, I probably shouldn't have watched UConn play defense and then seen Wisconsin play defense. Like, <laughs> holy cow is UConn good. And holy cow do we struggle playing defense, Rajiv. Man, this was a rough one today. You know, and like in all the grand scheme of things, a road loss to Iowa. You think, okay, is it that bad? It was that bad because we threw it away. We shot 48% from the field. We had guys, we had Crowell at 22, AJ Store at 21, Chucky Hepburn at 18. Chucky Hepburn had a pretty good game. And all of a sudden, we just can't stop them on the other end of the floor. I have never, and I'm saying never, routinely seen the Wisconsin Badgers play defense this poorly. And I don't understand. I tweeted right after the game. I'm like, I just cannot understand why we are so poor defensively when you have people that are plus defenders. You've got people that are doing that. But at the same time, they're playing zero team defense whatsoever. It's just so painful to watch, man. And I mean, I'm just, I'm deflated. Like I watched this game live. I was in the discord <clears throat> talking to uh, Bay Area Badger and JB and these guys. And then and you've obviously just watched it. So it's like interesting. And sorry, by the way, my voice, I am currently uh, under the weather with COVID. So wow. if I cough a lot and my voice is all messed up, that's what's going on. But it's okay because I'm just sitting in my little office here talking to you. So it's all right. Dude, it's so frustrating. Um, I, I want to start here because we always do start with player of the game, yeah. right? And I do think I want to give I want to give Chucky some some flowers here. Um, it, this listen, you know what? It's hard, right? Because Rajiv, it feels like we can't get all of our pieces locked in at the same game, right? We, how, for how for how long were we like, man? We Crowell and Hepper need to start scoring. Well, the last couple of games they've really done that, and then Klesman mm-hmm. has decided to, to like stop scoring, right? Tyler Wall had a rough game because foul trouble. Like we just can't get all of our pieces aligned. But listen, Hepburn played 42 minutes, and he, I want to say this, like he plays his ass off. Like there was a lot of heart in Chucky Hepburn's game today. Um, and honestly, I feel really bad for him on that last play because that last play is kind of a listen. Iowa deserves to win. I, I don't take anything away from anybody. They won the game, but that last play is kind of a BS play. The ball got kind of tipped up, lost in overtime. Per credit, per like he got it back and made the bucket. That's composure, but. I feel bad for Hepburn on that one because he he got his hands on that ball and it just sometimes things don't work out. Hepburn's my player of the game today because I thought he played with a ton of heart. Yeah, agreed. I mean, honorable mention goes to Stephen Crowell and AJ Store for that matter. But Chucky Hepburn, yeah, he's he's the he's the guy. Like he plays defense so hard every time. Could you imagine if we had five guys on the floor that played defense as hard as Chucky Hepburn did? What we would look like? What it would be like? Oh, it would be like the other team could, couldn't just do whatever they wanted whenever they wanted because that's what it were what's seeing. Chucky Hepburn tonight had four steals, four steals, yeah. six of 11. We wanted him to shoot more. He took 11 shots. Yeah. Made six, three of six from three. The guy had a great game. I mean, this is the Chucky Hepburn we want to see. If we could somehow, like you said, put it all together. Wow. This team could actually be great, but it's seemingly, it's just not something we can do. And boy, there's a lot to pick apart in this game, man. It's just so much. Yeah. I want to stake on Hepburn for one more second. Um, because, again, listen, you lose a two-point game in overtime on the road to a not-terrible Iowa team. Let's be honest, this is not a great Iowa team, but it's not a bad one either. You lose on the road by two. Like, this is, again, I hate saying this because I'm not trying to, like, minimize it. It's, it's not a terrible loss in the strategic view of this. Um, it's painful, though, because you should have won it, I think. But Hepburn, 42 minutes, one turnover. That's incredible. 42 minutes, one turnover from your Nine guard. rebounds, too. Nine rebounds. He was awesome, dude. Like, we haven't had this Hepburn all year, to be fair. Like, this has not been a consistent version of Chucky we've seen, but this is this is the great version of Chucky, and um, some of the pieces around him let him down today. 
I mean, like you can almost see. So now that Chucky's on this kind of this trajectory to working harder and 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 being more of a of a of a dependable offensive scorer, just think. Like, I mean, when you got to think when Max hits the on switch, right, and he's back shooting again and making some of his jumpers, and we have a game where Wall <clears throat> and Crowell can dominate the paint, don't get into foul trouble. We will dominate some teams. The problem is we haven't put it all together, and there's always something like. Every time the offense looks like this, the defense looks the way that it did. And I'm just, we've got to put that together because great teams do put it together. And I know that you're not going to have super, super hardworking defensive teams when you're scoring 90 points a game. I get that. But you also can't just let the other team do whatever they want, whatever they want. And it's unacceptable. You know know what I was thinking about today? Literally on the the ride home, I was thinking about a little bit some more defense because we talked about it. And I've really been trying to figure out, like, in my head, and not that I know basketball any better than anyone else, but I've been like, God, why have we struggled so much at times defensively? We're one of the worst perimeter defensive country teams in the country, statistically, right? Because we have pieces. Wall is a good piece defensively. Stores long. Klesman's a good piece. Heppard's a good piece. You know, and I was thinking about it. There's there's two things. Like, okay, let me talk about football really quick. Make a quick analogy. Like, we always talk about pass rush helps the secondary, right? You get through the quarterback quicker, secondary has to cover as long, and vice versa. A good secondary helps the pass rush. These things work together. Defensively for us right now, we have these two issues that even by themselves wouldn't be terrible, but compounded, they really create a massive problem for us, and that is we allow dribble penetration and we have no rim protection, right? So, one of those issues is, is workable, but when you let people get in the paint and then you also have nobody that alter shots in the paint like it's really difficult and that's what we're seeing we, we just give up two dribble penetration too easily all year come off pick and roll we don't get over screens very well we're letting people get into the paint and then again like you look at our front court we don't have a guy down there that teams really have to worry about blocking shots altering shots mm-hmm. deterring shots I, th- I think that's and that's not solvable in in this year like it just it's unfortunate but i think that's what it is um i don't know, thoughts I, I i was just like trying to figure it out yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think it, there, there's got to be an effort piece of it too <clears throat> because like, look, I was not a very good defensive team. I, in fact, I was a bad defensive team just based on what, they, what they've done this year. And there were times in the second half and the end of the first half where they were actually able to turn it on. Like They were like, all right, we are going to buckle down. We're going to lock in defensively. We're going to deny the ball. I mean, Crowd would get the ball at the top of the key and no guard. He was having trouble having a guard come and get the ball from him because they were denying the ball all the way past the perimeter. They were making it hard for us to go into the block. When we did throw into the block, this crowd was double teamed. He couldn't get any position down low because Freeman was Freeman played him pretty well. He oh. would catch the ball a little high and he would try to back down into the paint, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't establish position. Like it's just they were able to lock in defensively, but we were never able to do that. The entire time I'm watching the second half, I'm thinking, well, geez, all I'm really hoping for is for them to have a brick because <clears throat> they're getting any shot they want. They're running around screens. They're taking mid-range jumpers left and right, center, everywhere you look. There was no denying their offensive movement. It was just, will they make or will they miss the bucket? And can we get the rebound? By the way, we were out-rebounded again today. I mean, it's we have to make them work. And this is a, this is a staple of Wisconsin basketball. And the fact that we're not seeing it this year is incredibly in, frustrating because these players have been here for many years. None of th- these guys aren't new. So AJ Store and Blackwell are new. That's fine. But they're, they're producing. I mean, there's zero reason that you should not be able to play more denial defense. Are they just tired? Is it a fitness thing? <clears throat> Is it an effort thing? Is it a scheme thing? Are we are they are they playing too much drop coverage? Are they just like well, I don't know what's going on? But it is incredibly frustrating. And but you you hear comments that Greg's making, Greg Guard's making in the media. I mean, he's it's kind of it's insinuating that it is a bit of an effort thing, and they they need to lock in and be better. And Chucky Hepburn made some comments like it can't just be one guy or two guys. It's got to be all five guys working hard defensively, and we're just not doing it. And it's shocking when you when you go one in five in February, you've lost yeah. five of your last six, and this is how you're still performing. It's it's super frustrating, and I'm really losing my patience with this team. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, and I want to go here because uh, I missed the, the comment I had. There was a comment up here. I meant to start. I must have missed it, but it said it, it looked like they're um, – here it is. Bird Dogger says, you mentioned the effort thing, right? Bird Dogger says conditioning issue. They seem really flat late in games. Yeah, I, I think they seem flat because mm-hmm. the bench quarter plays. Like, mm-hmm. so there is, I'm not in the, the excuse making business, but sometimes reasons are reasons. And if your point, like if, if three year starters play like 38 minutes, 
the bench needs to play a little bit more. And I think this is a good time to get into rotations a little bit, Rajiv. Like, I thought, and we talked about this before the show, I thought Winter had a really nice stretch in the first half, had six points, had the end one, hit a three. I don't understand why he can't get a little more burn, in a, especially in a, maybe not every game, but in a game where he's looking good. Carter Gilmore played 15 minutes. Nolan Winter played 10. I, I That feels like those numbers at a minimum should be flip-flopped. And that, that's one of my biggest frustrations with this game. And, again, I want to be careful about, like, you lost a two-point uh, two point road game in the Big Ten. Like, that's not a terrible performance in the in the big picture, right? That though, You lose road games. But, I mean, I'm rambling at this point, Rajiv, because literally the game just ended for me, and I apologize. <laughs> I, I mean – <clears throat> The, so I have a list of bad things that are like quite long and my I list of good things go. are very short. My list of bad things, the top of my list is the winter thing though. He had, he got an and one, um, a bucket. He hit a three. Nolan winter is a guy that I think, I mean, you guys know, I like him. I feel like he can play with confidence and when he does get confidence, he's going to get better. You've got to see that ball go into the basket. You got to stay on the floor. You got to get into the game. He can actually make an impression on the offense and the defense if he has time out there you saw in the first half that the iowa player what is this kid's name uh brock harding he doesn't play many minutes normally he only played nine today but he played an entire like the last half of the first half because you know he, he was clearly making an impact early he was having a good two-man game with freeman and mccaffrey didn't take him out mccaffrey let him stay on the court and didn't bring perkins back in didn't like bring some of the other guys he kept the high hand on the floor. And then the Discord, we're having the same chat. I just don't. Why is Winter not staying out there? He literally got pulled and we didn't see him the rest of the first half. I'm like, he just yeah. had six straight points. Leave him out there, let him play. And instead, we get Carter Gilmore. <clears throat> Carter Gilmore, who had three layups tonight and had one point out of those three layups. You can't I mean, we just, we, we, we can't have this constant be the rotation. And this is the same discussion we have on nearly every reaction show. It's when is Gray Guard going to make adjustments and figure out how to change things? But he doesn't seemingly want to change things. And from a fan's perspective, I'm telling you, like, I, I'm not on the fire guard train. I know there's a lot of that's kind of coming back up and I'm not there yet. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really getting frustrated and I'm sort of like, you know, JB in the Discord today was like, hey, I got a seat for you right next to me on the on the fire guard train. But I just I don't want that seat yet, JB. But I'm warming to this because my frustration level seemingly grows over and over and over again. There's more I'll get to throughout this show. Let, let me ask you this, because these these games are always like uh they're they're inches here and they're like the Al Pacino speech that the inches we need are everywhere. Like if Hepper just hits that fadeaway shot late in regulation, we win by one, whatever it is. Don't get like, me started on that. No, I know. Listen, I don't like that possession either. I'm, I, maybe that's the one, not the one I should have pulled up because that's not <laughs> even what I'm trying to make. However, like, what if we win a close game? Are we, are we still flipping out to this degree? We're probably not, right? And I think that is important to. We all kind of fall victim to that a little bit. Um, right. uh, it is a two point road loss, right? A lot of things could have gone either way, and there's a lot of good that comes out of scoring 86 points, right? And there is credit to be given there at times. But I agree with you, like the rotations. To some degree, drove me nuts. I'll give you another one. Wall fouls out, right? Gets his fifth foul. Again, in my brain, I'm like, just put Winter in for Wall. Like, let Winter play some of the four, and, and that gives you another offensive weapon out there. Like, I don't understand the default to Carter Gilmore is my problem. I understand in moments where, where, where Carter Gilmore is the better matchup defensively, but I don't understand the default being Carter Gilmore when you have a guy like Nolan Winter who has shown offensive scoring power. Uh, off the bench. I, I that one just it drives me bonkers, man. And I'm not trying to hate on Carter Gilmore at all. I just don't understand it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, are you up against a break by the way? Or are you are you rolling? No, we're just rolling. Okay. Like this bonus show, I don't know. We're just Well, rolling. let me let me tell you about my other one of my biggest frustrations is the end of regulation. So we actually got a little like nice sneak peek into the huddle, okay? Right before the end of regulation. You saw Greg Gard talking to Tyler Wall, Stephen Crowell, and you see Chucky there. He's clearly showing on the whiteboard to get Tyler Wall the ball at the top of the key. And then Tyler Wall is going to dribble it in, try to get to the block. Crowell was telling him to pump fake. Like, <clears throat> that was the plan. Well, he did that. He got the ball at the top of the key. He ran right into a defender because no one's going to just let Tyler. Tyler Wall doesn't generally drive from the top of the key to the hoop. I'm sorry. That's not how he gets there. He usually gets the ball thrown to him. So then what happens? So then at the very end of that timeout, you saw him look at Chucky and say something. Basically, he was saying, if that doesn't work, get the ball and do your thing. Okay? Well, 
Five seconds into the possession, that's exactly what happens. Chucky now gets it to the top of the key, and we have the traditional last second step back three. I mean, I, that not is fun. not acceptable. It is just not. I mean, the, how many times last year did we say that? Can't we? What? You had three guys with four fouls. Get you, and you're also been in the double bonus since like ten minutes ago. So clearly, the the whistle is being blown on things. Get the ball down low and do something different. You cannot, you cannot rely on a step back fadeaway three at the end of regulation. That's literally what he drew up. He didn't draw up that play, but he drew up one seemingly one option that clearly just didn't work right away. And the second option wasn't oh, just give it to Chucky. Ah. That's frustrating, man. I mean, that that was like I had that big circle on my thing. I'm like, this cannot be the best shot we can get yet again. Yeah. I, I figured you would talk about that and it's warranted. Like that's a bad shot in that in that moment. It just is. And listen, some of that I think is on Greg Guard, right? I think some of that's on Chucky Hepburn. I think some of that and listen, again, like some of that is credit to Iowa for for playing decent defense, but you let them off the hook. Like you let them off the hook with that shot. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to give an Iowa defense. that gave up 86 that much credit there. I think you let them off the hook and there's, I think you could find probably better stuff. And by the way, in overtime, you know, tie game, I thought we, we got a better look. We got store going to the rim. We missed the layup, but you live with that every day. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he, he sure, sure. Wish he could have finished one of those two, but yeah. yeah, that was that was at least a good. Like, I'm happy with the effort. I'm happy with the aggressiveness. I do really think he could. Fi- Boy, you think he could finish one of those two? Like, it was just he just would be. I almost like he needs to take have a little more com- uh, composure in those moments because sometimes that it feels to me that he just kind of like gets a little helter skelter and tosses it up there versus like really focusing. But agreed, I'll take that any day of the week versus a fadeaway three hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I agree with you a little bit. On It's one of the reasons I think Storr, I think he'll test it, and I don't want to turn this into a whole NBA thing. I think he'll test the name, but I think he comes back. I think there's things to clean up, and the NBA is going to see that. Um, I want to throw a couple star comments up here, man. If you have any more, please. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I've been rambling. I haven't been looking oh, for dude, this. Oh, dude, that's what this show is for. <laughs> this is for all of us to rant together or celebrate together. Brian Axis says, did you cheer against Marquette? Absolutely. Oh, I almost just dropped the bomb. <laughs> Absolutely, I did. Listen, I don't understand. Low key, if you're in the chat, I don't understand Badger fans that cheer for Marquette because they're from Wisconsin. I don't. I don't get that personally. I, I do yeah. not. Marquette to me is our is our biggest basketball rival, and I do not like that. Yeah. So yes, uh, yes, I did cheer heavily against Marquette. Scotty six pack um, with Kedrick is a great follow. Uh, quad one lost by two. The sky is falling. Obviously, a little tongue in cheek there, and he's right in the big picture. Like in the big picture, I think the frustration is the. The, some of the defensive issues we continue to see um, continue to crop up. And Rajiv, we talked about this during the football season with the receivers dropping passes. And at some point, I think I just said, listen, they are who they are at this point. It's not going to mm-hmm. change. Maybe we need to stop losing our minds over poor defensive play because that's just I – mean, it stinks, right? But that's who this team is this year. But the thing is, Ryan, they weren't like this last year. And this is in so many of the same players. Like, what 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 happened? Like, how how did – how is it that we're just not playing defense like we used to play when these guys, like you would say that Chucky is a plus defender. You would say that Max is a plus defender. <clears throat> I don't know who else you would say is a plus defender on I the team. Wall, I mean, too. I think Wall right? Yeah. So, and last year they played better defensively and this year all of a sudden it's just gone. Like I just, that's where I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it. And, and obviously I don't think anyone can because many, you listen to anyone talk badgers. They say the same thing. Like no one understands what's wrong with their defense. You know what it is, man? Or I shouldn't say what it is because I don't know what it is. But you know what it might be? Is it just might be poor habits crept in when you were outscoring everybody? And listen, ha- habits are like rivers, man. It takes a while to change those. They cut pretty deep. And I think maybe when they were outscoring everybody, they just lost some of that defensive intensity. And it's hard to recapture that. Like, it's hard to change the character of a team midseason. I don't know if that's right or not, but it sounds decent <clears throat> in my head. Because I don't, otherwise, I don't. I don't really know why we struggle so much during stretches. And, and Kedrick says his team locks in on defense when it wants to, and this kind of speaks to that point. Left Iowa scoreless down the stretch of regulation for over four minutes, but you got to have it all the time. But you're not going to do it all that all the time if you're not in the habit of doing it all the time. You can't yeah. turn it on and off. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I want to bring up a one point and talk about this. Yeah. I know there's a lot of comments in the chat about it. Uh, did the refs take two points from us? So this obviously references the goal ten situation in the first half that. I mean, I was very frustrated by this, and I think that obviously by the by the letter of the law, they they do have the right to go back and look at the goaltend at the next stoppage. 
But what's frustrating, and I think everyone was frustrated about that, is Crow got his own rebound against two oh. guards. He was going to dunk that. He was literally just going to oh, dunk it. I was going to lay it up, but yeah, whatever. fine. But he would have got the two uh, points. And I do, I do find that to be very unfair. I mean, I think that, and obviously, you could see guard talking to the official right there. I don't know, I don't know the rules <clears throat> in this regard. Obviously, I'm guessing it's it's by the letter law because everyone's talking about it. I think that that I have heard that they can go back and look at the, that, but I'm not. It, it seems unfair that we got the offensive rebound. It's almost like, fine, let the possession finish and then say it was a goaltender, something like that. Because once you once you stopped it, it's kind of like a fumble in football. Once you once you're already you're calling it down, like you can't really do much about it. So I just, but then to go back and take the two points away late in a in a close game just seems like a really really bad thing. And I, I don't like that rule. And I feel like something needs to change because that that really wasn't fair for us. Yeah. I think that's really well said. It, that, that feels like one of the, the rules where maybe the intent of it was followed, but the spirit was not correct, right? Like, and that happens occasionally in sports. <sighs> Gosh, dude. I like, yeah, man. I, you know, you, doggone it. We were up by four in overtime. We were up big early. It just felt like. <sighs> I mean, speaking of overtime, one more decision that just drives me crazy that I put here is we had an opportunity to go to get a two for one and we didn't do it. Yeah. Which, you know, these are the kinds of things that, and maybe Chucky should take some responsibility for that too. I just feel like you got to, you got to be, you're the experienced team. They always say, you know, experienced guards is what wins in March. Like that's what wins titles. Like experience in college basketball is so important because oftentimes you don't have it because people are going to the league after a year or two. We have that experience and we're making mistakes that I'm like, I'm literally yelling at the thing. Like two for one, get a bucket and then make sure you get the last bucket, right? Like, Take those understand game time situations and make that adjustment. And I just, I don't know if it was because we're on the road. I'm not sure what was going on. It's just really frustrating to see like this, like th these little things that other teams don't make those mistakes. And yet we seemingly make them. And, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I will say this, let me give you one like somewhat positive thing. We only had seven turnovers tonight, which I will say that's really good. Okay, because we've been turning the ball over a lot lately. So good on them for not turning the ball over, but just now defend and don't turn the ball over and we can win a game. Yeah, I like your point there. There are moments in the game, in, in game specifically, where it feels like we potentially lose little tactical advantages, either from a timing standpoint or a rotation standpoint. The, the standpoint that we never really change up our defense. Like it's those little in game moments where it feels like other teams potentially steal points that we don't always capitalize on. I think that's a really good point. I apologize if I, if I was looking away for a second. I was just trying to pull the box. Oh, no, no. I'm, I do the same thing. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I just want to double check something. Um, mm -hmm. I want to throw a couple comments up here. This is from yeah. Jason Yeldon. He said, I agree with Ryan here. I don't even know what point I was making, but I'll take it. Uh, David Thering says, this is a good one. First of all, hope you get better sooner, Rajiv. COVID sucks. Thank you. Thank and you. I echo those statements. Absolutely. Hope you get better. Ryan and Rajiv, when do we start holding the <laughs> responsible for the lack of the defense and question job security? Um, a lot I think of it's a good discussion point. A lot of comments about gray guard, sea getting warm, job security, all of that. So I figure we'll just kind of wrap that all up into one comment here. But a lot of people asking it. Uh, Rajiv, I'll kick it to you, I guess. A, two-parter. Uh, is the seat, in your opinion, any bit warm? And then second-parter, should it be? I think it is warm. Um, I've said that a couple times on the show and the Bucky Report. I've said that I think the seat is beginning to warm because – You've got talent, and when you go through what we went through, I mean, it was we were talking about coach of the year for a minute there, and then all of a sudden you have a stretch where you're losing at Michigan, you're losing at Rutgers, you blow a 19-point lead in Nebraska, you lose this game, and there's clear effort issues, but more so than anything else, it's like we're just fans, and we as fans keep saying the same things. Like there's bad in-game adjustments. There's They're not doing anything different. Like, Hello, can we play a zone? I know that's never going to happen, but you know, can we maybe double when Freeman Freeman shot six of six tonight and was dominating Crowell down low? Like, let's make an adjustment to that. Crowell cannot defend the physical five, so then double, give him help, roll somebody over there, like pressure the perimeter more, to play more denial defense. Like, there's so many things throughout a game that we're just like, well, could he make this change? Could he make this change? Could he make this change? And I honestly feel like, Ryan, like we're just getting to the point where we're saying that too often. And <clears throat> I'm not there yet. I'm not on the fire guard train because I, I I don't really believe in this whole midseason stuff anyway. I want him to keep going. I want to see how the season ends. And then we evaluate the season holistically. From a recruiting perspective, we're seeing some improvements. Obviously, we're excited about free tag. I put a comment up here 
um, that uh, um, this one I'm going to start. Sorry. Uh, Evan Malone says, just remember if guard gets fired, free tag's not coming here. AJ Storm will transfer again, and we are going to have 90% of the guys leaving unless we get uh, Paris, then we'll be fine. He'll bring the swag. So yeah, obviously removing your head coach has a, a, you know, a domino effect of a lot of things that happen, but so I'm not in favor of it, but yeah, I do think the seat should be worn because he has to show that he can make adjustments. And if he doesn't, I think you said it earlier, maybe before the show or during the show, this, this kind of thing will, will end up leading to him leaving Wisconsin. If he doesn't, if he is going to continue to be so stubborn. Yeah. I want to keep that comment up there. Cause I think I have a, a take on that. But let, a, I don't, I don't think it is warm yet, really. So Dan, that's just my opinion. Um, I think we are very much, and we're fans, and we're allowed to do this. And I'm not saying it's not warranted. And again, I never tell anybody how to fan, like fan however you want, like be incredibly mad or incredibly whatever. It's all good here. Like a hundred, as long as people are respectful, it's all good as always. But mm -hmm. I think we get to be creatures of the moment a little bit. And I don't think athletic directors do that quite as much. They shouldn't, quite frankly. Um, like this is a, a six game, a five, a six game stretch that's really poorly. But to your point, he was almost he was in, in the running for coach of the year, or Big Ten coach of the year at one point too. All of that goes together, right? We came into this Iowa game twentieth in the nation. How many Division One basketball teams are there? Three hundred? Mm -hmm. I don't even mm -hmm. know. Three fifty? Whatever it is, Kedrick Kedrick Stubbers would know. But my point is, this is still like I know it's super frustrating right now. I am super frustrated right now. This team should be better than this defensively. And there's red flags here worthy talking about. However, I don't think you're on the red, like the hot seat if you go into an Iowa game late in the season, ranked 20th in the country, right? You know what I mean? Like, this is a good year up to this point. We just got too high on 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 the early season success, and now this crash down is is just crushing. So that's fair. That's fair. I do think that the reason that I say that it is warm is only because we have a new athletic director that is clearly making moves that sure. that he's trying to push things forward. So. If if Barry was still the athletic director, I would not say that. I was gonna say, I was gonna guess three like fifty two, but I'm glad that, that Kendrick uh, got it right. Kendrick, yeah. Kendrick's a lunatic with basketball. I knew. Um, and playing. I I think that like if it it's because I believe McIntosh has a whole new sort of plan for this university and this athletic department and new expectations, and that's why in the end he didn't give the job to Jim Leonard and he gave it to to Luke Fickle. And I think that's the kind of sort of like we talk about the Badgers basketball team have lacking a killer instinct. Well, I think Chris McIntosh kind of has that killer instinct. He wants what I think Badger fans want, which is to take the department to the next level. So because of that is why I say that I think he actually is. Warm. Now, who knows? Chris McIntosh could be looking at this being like, you guys are nuts. I'm not firing him anytime soon. Okay. But I think that it might be more because he has a new set of expectations. That's a very fair point. That that is a hundred percent very her point, and I can definitely see your perspective there. Um, I want to finish off on the reason I put this back up there. If I said this during the Luke Fickle thing, people said, uh, you gotta hire Jim Leonard because otherwise you're gonna lose the recruiting class. And I was very clear, like you you hire the right coach, whoever it is, and screw the recruiting class. Like, I don't honestly, if if you really think, and I don't I'm I don't think guard should be fired right now, but if you think guard should be fired, you don't not fire him to keep Daniel Freetag. I'm sorry, Daniel Freetag is awesome i love him he's he's not lebron james right I'm, I'm just being completely fair here you you find the right guy and the right guy will bring the right talent so if you want guard gone and that that's completely fair if you do i i don't but if you do you don't keep them just to keep a, a recruiting class together because that's short-term thinking i like this comment because i think this kind of presents like you know the opposite point of the fire guard stuff way up north says we missed nine free throws and wall spends a critical part of the game on the bench in foul trouble so fire the coach yeah I mean, I think Wade, this is a good this is a good perspective, and I like this comment because, you know, I think look the game definitely falls on the players and the coach th today. I mean, and a lot of it falls on the players and their effort. And yes, we miss we missed a ton of free throws. We missed two technical free throws when we were within two points of the lead. It's just frustrating. So yeah, I mean, uh, way up north, I'm with you. I don't. I really don't think he should be fired yet. I don't want that. I definitely am not saying that. I just I do think that like that McIntosh is probably at least thinking about it and. I mean, like, you know, when, when you have this kind of a stretch and you're seeing, you you know, a potential Big Ten championship run going into now, we're fighting for what, fourth, fifth place all of a sudden, then it's like it does kind of bring up whether or not the future is is really there. And obviously that's what he has to decide is, is the future there. So, yeah, I definitely agree. I'm not not there yet, but I am. there are con some concerning things. There's no doubt about that. I love it. Uh, we got South Bend Hawkeye in the chat as well, and he's been super respectful, so it's all good. Um, congratulations on the win, man. He says, if you don't make his seat warm, you get what we have at Iowa football now, the coach that won't leave Kirk Ferentz. You mean we'll win the Big Ten West? I'll take that. 
<laughs> Let's go. Want the best defense in the country every year? Let's go. Give me some oh of that. Oh, my right gosh. Now. I right. don't want Brian Ferentz's offense, though. That's for sure. <laughs> but we'll have a good defense, right? Isn't yeah. that what we're talking about? Oh, gosh. If you can't laugh, you'll cry. It's seeing Greg Gard supposed to have good defenses. This is what's so frustrating this year. This is not supposed to happen once we have offense that isn't having these problems going into scoring droughts, like all these things. It's like, okay, this is the year we're going to suck defensively after what, now that we actually have the ability to score 80 points. Uh, you, can never, you can never have anything, everything, man. Rob Jansen says, Ryan loves guard. This team is not a worthy ring team. Listen, guards won 60, over 60% of his games. I mean, uh, I'm not trying to, I get more people, I get more frustrated with guard than people realize at times. I lose my mind over some of the rotations. I hate the fact that he won't play his zone. He's won over 60% of his Big Ten games. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, at the end of the day, that's a hard thing to do. And be very careful because you can you can you can Nebraska this thing if you're if you're not careful. Like agreed. Really and that's why I said last year I didn't want I didn't want that because when yeah, when you make wholesale changes, you really go down like a, a whole new avenue that can really lead to who knows what. So yeah, I mean, we said last year he's you know, you, you got to get to tournament every year. That to me is an absolute must. And so last year was a big no, no. We're obviously going to get there this year. We need to continue to be a team that advances this year. Sweet 16 would be really great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm beginning to get my questions. I don't know if we're going to get there. I still think that's that we're a sweet 16 level team. We should be able to make that happen. I mean, look, come, coming into the game today, by the way, they announced us as a top four seed after, after losing four straight. <laughs> and then we lose today. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this committee is trying this committee would have given us a number one seat had we probably not had those those losses no, like no. i mean the committee loves us because we have big wins over marquette and virginia and michigan state and so on and so forth so I, it's frustrating because like we actually really should be in a situation where we do get a top four seed when if you coming into this game you have a top four seed you should hold that because no. going i mean after today we've got two more home road games and three more home games you gotta win at home i'm sorry you gotta win three no at home you gotta go nine and one in the league and hopefully you pick up one more road win. Then you're four and six. Maybe you're, you finish the year 13 and seven. These things like it's it's okay. That's that's an acceptable record. And then maybe you do get a four or five seed still. Yeah. And then you 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 can kind of see yourself getting to the Sweet 16. So I I'm, I was really surprised by that because obviously we watched the game really closely. We've seen a lot of the 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 sort of the holes that this team has. So you know it's hard for us to see us at, currently as a four seed, especially after the last five losses. I'd say this too, and I think I think what you brought up there is a good point to illustrate. Nationally, nobody's going to look at this and be like, oh, "You lost on the road in overtime to Iowa by two? Oh. Like, you know, my, my point is yeah. nobody's going to look at that nationally. Like, that's not going to. You go to ESPN tomorrow morning, see what the front page headline is. It's not going to be Badgers drop shocking game to Iowa on the road. You know what I mean? Like, nationally, this is not a big thing. Um, you, you should probably win this game. It's tough on the road in the Big Ten. And to your point, we were a, a projected at four or five-ish seed going into this game. You know, you win your home games going out. You're going to still finish with a pretty solid seed in the big in, in March, right? And that's not – again, that's not that meant to make anybody feel better right now. I'm trying to word this the right way. It's not meant to say the loss doesn't matter. Don't be frustrated. Be frustrated. But also understand this is not a great team, and not great teams lose Big Ten games on the road. Yeah, and that's that's when when you're this close to it, and you care about it as much as we all do. That are part of this and listening to this and watching this. Like for us, we believe that we actually you know could have won the Big Ten. You know maybe we were as good, and you, you, then you see a team like Illinois that dropped 85 on the road today and got a big road win. You know that's yeah. what Illinois does. That's what that's what the top teams are going to do. They're not going. to, I mean, we've basically just laid an egg on the road in all of February. Every single road game has been dropped so far. Like that's not good. I mean. Yep. that's what good teams can can make that happen and, and can, can achieve that goal. So you're right. We're just not there. We don't have it this year. And we got to just fight tooth and nail to get as many wins down the stretch as we can, try to get as high seed as we can, get a decent draw, hopefully, and then anything can happen in the in the, in the, in the tournament. So we just got to hope for something fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll start to wrap it up here again. I have so many comments. I, I often wonder when I do a live show regime just how long we could keep going with people still watching. <laughs> Uh, Bear Beat says Bear Beat on Bear Bait on the trail. Sorry, says this is not a good team right now. I think I'd, yeah, I'd agree with that. You've lost five of six. Um, this was a comment, uh, Jason. I think this he might have put this up here earlier too. There were a couple of Klesmet comments. We haven't really talked too much about him today. Um, 
this cousin's game travel on the road. Yeah, he's been really you've you've said multiple times on off switch just keeps he's like he's got it and he just it's off right now. And I was happy that he took 10 shots. I was I was glad to see him shoot more. I was actually surprised when I looked at the box score after the game. I was thinking, oh, he probably took like five shots. He should have shot more, but he took 10. I'm like, wow, he just shot 20 percent, which is unfortunate. Uh, but he took four three. So but it's like all of a sudden he just can't he can't make anything. I mean, if you. <laughs> It's just so frustrating because, like, if I asked you who is the best shooter in our starting lineup, you'd probably say Max Klesman, right? Pure shooter. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Probably. And, but yet, this is the kind of stat line that he has in a, in, a, in a road game. And then in the second half, later, I think, I don't know when it was, late in the second half, uh, maybe Crowell had it at the top of the key. He finds, um, you know, Klesman on the wing and Klesman throws it to Chucky in the corner. Okay. So you have, Chucky in the corner, and you have Max, who is the by far. I mean, I think it's pretty clear for most Fit fans, maybe not the best shooter on the team, but definitely the best shooter in the starting lineup on the wing. You're going to throw that ball completely wide open, by the yeah. way. Why? Why are you throwing that ball? Just shoot, man. Just there were so many shoot. times today. I just was, I was like, can we just shoot, please? Like, can can someone just try to make a play? Other than AJ Store, who really tries hard to make plays. But come on, like, why are you passing to the corner? Why are you taking a corner three over a wing three any time? He's in a funk right now. Like, he's yeah. just in a funk. And it feels like he's trying to, instead of just feeling the game, he's overthinking it a little bit. When the ball swings to you, bro, shoot the ball. You're max yep. class. Like, you're... And you're wide open. It wasn't even like he was contested. He was wide open. That's And this is, though, goes back to what we've said about him. We've talked about him. It's It's super inconsistent. Like, this was kind of him at the beginning of the year where he wasn't shooting enough or he wasn't scoring. Then he got nuclear right and then now he's kind of like it's too inconsistent and it's tough man you're now by the way i, I not to lose sight in any of this because this is a two-point game that easily could have gone the other way and i guarantee the tenor of this chat changes completely if we sure. somehow pull out a one-point win like you're seeing the light come on for chucky that's super encouraging you're seeing steven crowell be aggressive early that's super encouraging guys like these are good things not you can't lose a two-point game on the road and have nothing good that comes out of it. There, there's signs of some things we've been worried about starting to click and come back to life. Like, that's good. Now, if Klesman can re-engage and you have this version of Hepburn and that version of Crowell and don't get um, Tyler Wall in foul trouble. We could win a lot of games like that. Yeah, like there, We could win a lot of games like that. There's optimism inside this horror film, sure. right? Like, you can you can search through the scenes and find optimistic stuff. Um, and you don't have to search that hard. It's just frustrating. It's still frustrating to lose the game. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's, I just want, I just so badly want this team to just be who we thought they were going to be and competing for the big 10 and to fall like, you know, like right at the end of January, I had said on, I think on the Bucky report, like February is so critical. Like we have eight games and it was going to be a tough stretch. And we all knew that. And the fact that we have, totally laid an egg we're one in five in february and we just the rest of the big tens like what the hell just happened to wisconsin and it kind of sucks like it sucks yeah. to just have this team like have so much passion and we were all excited about it and uh, nationally everyone's like oh wow wisconsin came out of nowhere aj store we talk about player of the year all kinds of stuff nba and then it's like yeah we can barely win a game and yeah. even, even in our win we didn't look that good Herb Herman says, who's improving on this team year to year? Used to be a staple of Wisconsin. No individual growth within the program. I love this comment. Herb's mm -hmm. a good dude. He's been chatting them, and he's been in the chat more, which I really love. Um, who who has really improved, do you think? <laughs> um, I think Tyler Wall has always improved. I, I like Tyler Wall. I think he is like yeah. and maybe not, maybe not massive steps because he was he's been good for a while. Um, but you're right. I mean, th Herb, this is a great comment because this was a staple of Bo Ryan. This was like like Bo Ryan saw players coming in freshman. And by the time they left, they were great post players. They were great shooters. They were great defenders. And that is, that is an issue. I think this is a great point. I hadn't really thought about it. I would so say wall probably is the guy that's, that's, that's grown the most, but yeah, it's, it's a stretch. John Berger says uh, we can go all night. Cause we're a community and community stick together, especially in morning. Let's go, John. <laughs> I love JB. I would say here's a sneaky one uh, back to the herbs question or comment. Stephen Crawl's better this year. Like across the board, statistically, he's better. He's shooting better from every every spot. Um, he's better. Again, people view Stephen Crowell through a lens of what they want a five to be. In, in a way, he's better this year. Um, yeah, I, agree. I would agree with that. But like, I think Connor, Connor, can we really quickly talk about the fact that Connor played four minutes? 
Like, uh, uh, what's the point? <laughs> why, 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 yeah, why are you even putting him out there? Like, what, what kind of a rotation is this? I just, uh, what is he thinking? Like, what are the, what are, what are Krabinoff and all the, the assistant coaches telling him? Like, what is, I, I don't really understand this because a lot of his, all of his assistant coaches that were former players, like everyone's played and they understand how these kinds of things roll. And like, you're just yeah. not doing anything productive here. Like, I, just one game. I wish that like other someone else could decide the rotations and see what would happen if you left a hot shooter out there and you let Nolan Winter get a few more minutes and you let Connor get hot because when Connor gets hot, he is the best shooter on the floor against hardly yeah. any team in the country. He can absolutely be one of the best pure shooters in them in America. You gotta let him go, and it's just and then then the, the byproduct of that is oh. 42 minutes, 39 minutes, 37 yeah. minutes, 39 yeah. minutes. Like that's four of our starters tonight. It feels like you're holding him to an impossible standard that right? you're, you're holding Connor to, and get, he had a bad foul. He fouled a three point shooter. That's, that's inexcusable, but I feel like you're holding him to a really tough standard. If you, if you say one bad foul, you're coming back out and you are never playing again in this game. Totally, because like, look at everyone else who makes those mistakes. Like, you, you got to let them play through it, and they learn from that. They can get better by being out there and playing and understanding, okay, I'm not going to do that. But if every single time they make a foul or do anything bad, you can see them just kind of glance over to the bench and, yep, yeah. here they go. Like, they're, I'm like, and I used to hate that about the Bo Ryan days too. So you turn the ball over, you were gone. Yeah. But like, it's just, there's, <sighs> you got to let these guys get into it because you're not doing anything for your team come March. If you're if you're playing your starters 40 minutes a game. No, it's tough, man. By the way, I've kind of said this team's not deep enough. And people are giving, giving me crap about it. Brandon Noble is giving me crap about all these people. The team's so deep, Ryan. If it's so deep, why are all the starters playing 40 minutes? I mean, you, you don't you can't have it both ways. I mean, I think that's a fair question, though. I think it actually is deeper than 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 you think it is because they should be playing more minutes. Well, like, not. like but, so but that's what we're complaining about because guards screwing it up. Like, I mean, I don't think that, I don't. I think there is deeper, and I think oh, Winter oh. and Asijian could both be more productive and efficient offensive players if they had more minutes. Yeah. No. So, I, yeah. I, I see I, your I, point, though. I see your point. I just I feel like you know it's kind of like a a catch twenty two because we're not deep because they never get a chance, but then the argument can be made. Well, they're not, they don't get a chance because they suck, but I don't think that's true. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you the thing that nobody wants to hear because it's kind of a cop-out answer. What happens in practice really does matter. And none of us see that. Fair. And nobody wants to hear that because it, it's super easy just to point fingers and yell. But like, again, though, if Connor's practicing well enough to play, it doesn't make sense to yank him out after one bad mistake. That That's just my opinion on that. I, a guard does a lot of things well. He really does. And I don't want this whole show to be about like, and there's a point in here. Um, someone says you keep you guys keep saying keep guarding the whole show has been about how bad of a coach he is. That's a fair point, Mike said. Yeah, uh, Mike, good um, call. That, listen, that is a very fair point. And that's why I tried, <laughs> I did try to make the point that I don't want him fired because the totality of his body of work says he wins over 60% of his games. And Agreed. ultimately, that's more important than rotations, winning games. And he wins more of them than most people. You can like that or hate that, but those are the numbers. I mean, yep. Yeah, I mean, I look at the end of the day. If you, if you told me we were going to be nine and six right now at the beginning of the season, I probably would have said, okay, well, that's that's okay. I mean, obviously, after January, I was not. I would have been furious if you told me we were going to be nine and six. But you know, look, taking a step back, which is really hard to do on the day that you've watched this game and you've seen us lose five out of the last six. Yeah. If you take a step all the way out, yeah, Mike, you're right. Like. I still believe he should still be the coach. And that's why, because you got to look at it holistically. But yeah, right now, it's awfully hard to really make that case. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Cause again, we are, I feel like we're building momentum. Like, and <laughs> again, like we will continue talking all this, both on Locked On and Bucky Report. Um, any final thoughts? We always kind of finished up. Anything else kind of bouncing around in your head there? I just want to finish strong. I just want to finish strong. I feel like, you know, we have like we've had this tough month and it's not over yet. We've still got to go at Indiana this month. We've got in a game at Purdue in March. We got home against Illinois. I think we're home against maybe Maryland and Rutgers, I think. Um, and th those those games we need to finish strong. I would love to see in these last five games to go four and one. All right. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I just I would love to see that happen to really finish strong, to put yourself in a position where you can get a buy on the first day of the Big Ten tournament and work your way into into the top four. And I just, 
All I want is a nice run. I would love to get excited about March. I don't want to go into March feeling like I do right now that we've lost five of our last six. I want to go in on a high. So just please get this run in, get ready for it, and let's get some freaking wins. Yeah, that's about where I'm at too. Um, let's throw this last comment here. Comment on join the chat. Comment on a great dude. Are we playing for championships or not? That is what it comes down to with guard. Rajiv, we're going to end on this question. Do you think we can compete for a national championship with Gray Guard? God, it's awfully hard, Commandant. I mean, look, at the beginning of the year, I'll, I'll say, because I, I, we asked this question last year, and I said, yes, I think he can. We He can compete. I do believe <clears throat> that Gray Guard can get us there with the with better players, and those players have to be brought in, and he has to do that. Um, I'm, I would agree with you on this though, commandant. I would agree that if you don't think you have a coach that can take you to the final four, you should not have him as your coach. And, but I do, I, I still think he can, I'm not saying he's going to go win three national championships in a row, but I, I do think we, because in, and especially in this league and in the, in the a format of our tournament, like it's, you get, you win four games, you're in the final four. Like, I do think that we can go on a run if we have the right players. What do you think? What's your answer to that question? It's such a hard question. It is a hard question. But yeah, do, do you, Loki, Loki, let's be fair to this too. We are humans. We're not robots. Like AI hasn't fully taken over yet. Give it a couple of years. But human, we are slaves to our emotions to some degree. And literally coming off an overtime loss to Iowa is probably the, I'm just saying, it's probably the wrong time to ask that question. What if I, what if I'd asked you that question after the Michigan State game? Right. I'm, yeah, yeah, I might have been like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I would like you know, like you would you would like Metallica in the background as you answer the question, right? Like so I think that's it's fair to to understand we're answering this after an Iowa loss and losing five of our last six. Um I think it's possible with guard, although I do think he I it's not something I'm, I'm I would bet the mortgage on, I would say. But yeah, I agree there's not that. a lot of coaches out there. To be super fair, there's not a lot of coaches out there. I would say you get him to Wisconsin, and I guarantee you he's winning a title here either. Like those are hard people to find, and I think that is a fair point to make, and maybe one to end on potentially, or we keep going. I'm all good. This is actually a really great question. I love Herb, <laughs> Herb Herman. Herb is football or basketball close to a title? You you take this one first. Basketball. It's always basketball to me because it, it's always basketball to me because it's you have to get the so format many in football. Like you have to get so many more dudes in football and it's basketball because historically we've seen Wisconsin get to the precipice of the national championship, right? Different coaches, different styles, different schemes, different environment, whatever. We've seen Wisconsin get there. You just need one or two dudes in basketball and you can find dudes in football. You need like 20 dudes. Like I, it's just so much harder. And because of that, I think the answer is for a school like Wisconsin, the answer is always basketball. Yeah. And I would also say basketball only because yeah, the format of the tournament and especially in the new big 10, <clears throat> getting out of the big 10 in football to be into that twin now with the 12 team playoff that we, we would have been in several of those in, in the past 10 years. So there is that like the 12 team playoff playoff will make that a little more palatable. And theoretically you could argue that's closer, but just because of the nature of the tournament and how it's six wins and you know, I mean, you theoretically you're, you're expected to get to the sweet 16 anyway. So yeah, it's probably basketball, but fickle, you know, fickle's got his, his momentum going in the right direction too. I, I, yeah, I think all those reasons. I think we're all in basketball. Kedrick's is basketball. Fence is basketball. Um, Kedrick's is basketball. It's not even close. Um, Joseph says, what caliber of coach would be drawn to coach here? I've seen a, a version of this question a couple places, and then Commandant had actually a pretty good response. Not Maybe not directly to that, but he said, everyone who says who are we going to hire, very few people saw us bringing in Luke Fickle. Like, mm -hmm. I think, like, you got to look at it. Like, Wisconsin is much more of a have than have not in the college football ecosystem, right? You could get... Like there's there's a ton of reasons to believe you would get an incredibly qualified coach to come to Wisconsin. Or <laughs> like that hasn't always worked for really good programs hiring really qualified coaches. Scott Frost was a super qualified coach at Nebraska. All, my bigger point is like you just never know, and you are trading someone with a track record for the unknown. And no matter how much people want to say it'll be great, it'll work out, it doesn't always work out. And I think when we get in these moments, fans don't ever look. I shouldn't say don't ever, and I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but people don't generally look at the potential downside of it. Cause you get so excited about, man, we could bring in an X, Y, and Z and think of the recruiting. It could, it could also crater. And then you enter a wasteland of college basketball. That's a possibility. And people need to acknowledge that. For sure. Which is why you have to look at the whole overall state of the program. And if, as long as we're moving in the right direction, it looks like we are from a recruiting perspective. So you couple that all together and we'll see how it goes.
By the way, at 34 minutes, I said, all right, let's wrap this up. Let's get one more comment. Let's so get- much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. All right, we are going to wrap it up there. A bunch more coming up uh, this upcoming week. A couple of good guests. Uh, Brian Smith recruiting interview will drop Monday. He talks about all of our Jameer Scott. He loves, loves Jameer Scott, by the way. Out of all of the three newest commits, he's highest on Jameer Scott. He also says Tackett Curtis will be the best player on this football team by the end of next year. So a lot of hype. Don't get mad at me. Brian Smith tells it like it is. Uh, <laughs> Any last thoughts, my friend? Uh, yeah, tomorrow night, um, check out the Buck Report. We're going to go live sometime tomorrow night, and we're going to do a football depth chart. We're going to go through our predicted depth chart going into the spring, and of course, talk more about the gray guard stuff. So join us tomorrow night. Do you have to? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, we'll wrap it up there, guys, on Wisconsin. Thank you, everybody in the chat, so much for tuning in. I uh, really do appreciate everybody in the community, as always. And uh, let's go.